Well, hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Two Moms in a Couch, where we talk about all things momming, parenting, and life. <laughs> my name is Christina, and my name is Hannah. And we're super excited to chat with you this morning. We are going to talk all about a really important topic, I think, especially in this day and age when we've gotten a little bit more disconnected after the pandemic and with so many of us working from home and things just being so different. We're going to be talking about making friends, in particular, making friends as a mom. Yeah, and this is one of those things where you and I started chatting about this and just you know, the conversation flowed because I don't know about you. I, I have always considered myself to be more of an introvert and I have always struggled with making friends even before I was a mom, (laughs) you know, just different people have different, you know, abilities to connect or not. Like my sister still knows people from second grade. I don't even remember who I went to second grade with. (laughs) So like for someone who let's say didn't, you know, we, we had talked about whether or not you had friends from when you went to school, like when you went to high school, college, like, you know, how a lot of people make those friends when they're much, much younger and they stay friends throughout. But what do you do if you're not one of those people where you were more of a, I don't want to say loner. I hate that word, actually. I really don't like the word loner, but that I don't know the other, I, I can't think of the other word to use here. What do you do when you didn't have as many friends in high school, didn't make that many great connections in college or have lost touch because you're not a great connector like me and you just never remember to stay in touch with people. Um, or if you've moved to a new area and now you're rebuilding a whole new group of friends but you now have the added sort of complexity of having children and a full-time job and potentially other family obligations, like if you're caring for aging parents. Um, so how do you, how do you meet people? How do you make friends? So I'm going to ask you, Christina, how do you, how do you make friends? <laughs> as a, I mean, you've got your single mom, you're working full-time as a consultant, you've got your kid, you're actually homeschooling now. So how do you meet other women that you can connect with? Yeah, so I would say that uh, honestly, like in my adult years, making friends has not been a really huge priority for me um, until maybe the last couple of years. I've really been um, a little bit more intentional about, okay, well, let me add to um, my my actual work that I have. And I can definitely relate in terms of being an introvert. I've always been incredibly introverted and I've always been like that quiet kid, you know, the one that doesn't say much. Um, but though I've always been introverted, I always was super popular, like when it came to, you know, grade school, all the way up through high school. So I always had a lot of friends when I was in person with those friends, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I can definitely relate to the losing touch after like high school in particular. So after graduating from high school, you know, while I kept in touch with um, a couple of friends and then, um, you know, one friend in my part- in particular, my best friend in high school, like we kept in touch for several years after, like even up until, I don't know, a couple of years ago. But even with that connection, we've started to lose touch a little bit. Now she's becoming a new mom. She's married and uh, she lives in a completely different state. Yeah. And, um, and she's been in a different state for a while, um, but we would still at least see a each other a couple of times a year when she'd come down to visit family, right? But um, with that, we've lost touch because, you know, she's planning to stay where she's at and I'm staying where I'm at um, in Florida. But I was okay with that. You know, I have, um, I'm okay with having a small circle of of intimate friends that I see every now and then, because honestly, that's when my schedule allows. Yeah. Um, I'm, I don't need a whole ton of social interaction to be happy, but if I'm, if I have no social interaction, then I will start to become a little bit stir crazy. Um, so in the last couple of years, you know, I've been thinking about adding to my, you know, small circle of friends. And for me, my friends range from all ages and all different walks of life, because I think that's how you learn and grow as a person. And I have one of my closest friends, she has, you know, grown children, like their, her Mm -hmm. kids are, you know, 20 and older. And, um, you know, 
she has a lot more time on her hands and would like to hang out a lot more, but I have a young child and I'm a single mom. So, you know, I can only manage. manage How do you manage that dynamic? Because, you know, I can imagine that it would probably get frustrating for your older friend who has got grown children that she wants to hang out. And that's how you, that's how you build upon a friendship, right? You spend time together, but there, there could be any reasons why you might not be able to do that. One, you have a child, so your time is differently distributed, <laughs> I'll <Yeah>. say, <laughs> in a day or in a week. But the other thing could be that, you know, you may, I, I, you know, I use the word introvert, but like I recently heard another term called ambivert, which we'll talk about later. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but you could have a moment where you, you want to see the friend, but you really don't want to interact with other people. <laughs> like you're just not in the space to do that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've, I'm always like, I'm huge on communication and I just think being honest is like really where it's at. Um, when this friend in particular, when she and I connected, it was, uh, I want to say like seven or eight years ago now. Okay. And, um, you know, my little one was about three at the time, like two, three, And, um, that was, you know, part of how we connected. We actually met through at work, uh, at a job that we were both working at at the time. And we just kept in touch. Um, even though I left the company and I pursued other things, we still just kept in touch and we would meet up, you know, maybe every other week or so. Um, but it's communication. You know, I let her know that when we were hanging out, I wanted to wait until after my little one was tucked into bed. And then, you know, my mom could watch him while, you know, he's sleeping, but I didn't want it to interfere with time or plans that I had with my, my child. So, you know, we would get together at, you know, eight o'clock or eight 30 and we would go, you know, get drinks and, and appetizers or something. And I don't drink now, but you know, we did yeah. in the past. Right. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's what we would do. And, or, you know, on occasion, like go out dancing, or I would just go over to her house and we'd watch movies. And it yeah. was definitely frustrating from her because I know that, you know, sometimes she'd be like, oh, like, you know, we're making plans and I'd be like, okay, well, how's like eight o'clock or even seven thirty for like a dinner reservation. She's like, oh, kind of late. And I'm like, I know, but I, I, I've got to make sure that I get my son fed and that I, you know, make sure I make a meal for my mom, who's going to be watching him. And, you know, then I have to get ready and all of the stuff I need to do bedtime routine. Like, I just didn't want to sacrifice that, especially as a single mom. Um, and she definitely just understood. And I think that that's, what's really important with friends. It is understanding like Mm -hmm. where each other is, is coming from. And, you know, there've been times, like, especially when she's, you know, also a single mom. Um, so she dates as well. So there've been times when, you know, she sings somebody new and, you know, we all know how that goes when we're seeing yeah. somebody new and we're infatuated with that person, you know, friends, who are they? Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> so she would, you know, be like, well, I'm going to hang out with this guy instead. And I'm like, I mean, I went through all this trouble to make, uh, make arrangements for childcare, but girl, I completely get it. Go ahead. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Yeah. And I think that that's a really important part of, you know, being friends and being able to, um, you know, foster that connection. So she and I can go without seeing each other for a month or two and it'll still be okay because I do make a lot of effort to call and just have like a phone conversation. Um, I'm big on that. I'm not a huge texter, texter, but I will call, Um, you know, if whether it was like waiting for my little one to get out of school or if it's while I'm cooking dinner or if I get to go outside for a little walk or whatever it is, like I I'm going to take time and call, you know, the few friends that I have so that, you know, they know that they're not forgotten about Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. No, that makes sense. Noted. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, But you know, that, that brings me to an interesting um, thought, which is, I once heard, and I don't remember where I heard this, I'm sure somebody really smart wrote a book or did a whole scientific study, but this idea that you have relationships, like it's unfair to expect everything that you need in friendship or even in a romantic relationship from one person, that people come into your life and have like specific places in your life. So like you may have one friend that's someone you can do kids like a 
friend that's got kids your age and that you friendly, but you might not go, you might not socialize with that person outside of your kids playing, right? Or you might have a friend that's good for like one thing. Like I, I made a friend that um, goes to the gym. So like when I was in that stage where I was starting up, like going back to the gym, she was someone who I was spending a lot of time with because she goes to the gym too. <laughs> but outside of that, like we, we hung out a few times socially and didn't have a whole lot to talk about just because she's in a different space, right? Her kids are younger. She's a stay-at-home mom, like just not interested in some of the things that I was interested in. So we, so you find people that may have pieces of what you're interested in, but not everything, right? Versus looking for someone who's going to be like that complete friend where you can do everything and like they have all the pieces of what you're looking for in friendship. Yeah, no, I think that, I mean, a couple of things on that, like I, I definitely, you know, agree in terms, and I know that when people talk about, you know, not expecting one person to be everything for you, I think that they do mean that like a little bit more in a romantic relationship. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's why it's really important to have uh, like friends outside of the relationship and all that. And we can yeah. definitely talk about that stuff from a, or in a future episode, right? But <laughs> yeah. I think in terms of uh, making friends, I think that's the power of, you know, being able to be selective. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that it's easy sometimes, depending on the setting that you're in, to feel like you actually do connect with somebody. But I think what's really important is kind of like what you just said there, like with the, you know, friend from the gym, there really wasn't much to connect with outside of that setting or that environment. So for me, that wouldn't be somebody that I would, I would make a friend, um, like personally, Mm. like, interesting. I would be an acquaintance with that person. And I'm, I'm big on having my, my levels of kind of people in my life. You know, I have acquaintances and a number of acquaintances, but if you make to the circle of like friends, for me, that hits a little differently because that means there's a lot more involved in that. Like it's me being there for you. It's you being there for me. There's, you know, there is that like willingness to um, bend a little bit more for that person, if that makes sense. So I think that that's really what it is. It's more about like being selective. And I feel like not all people are looking for deeper connections. Um, That's something to note as well. Some people are okay with more surface level friendships or connections where, you know, it is just about going to the gym or it's talking about the weather or it's talking about, I don't know, the drama or like pop culture stuff, which I know nothing about. I don't either. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Not everybody is like, you know, really looking for like those deeper, like more intimate oh. like connections where it's like, I can be my authentic self and you can be your authentic self. And um, I think as somebody who genuinely enjoys deeper connections with people and I'm not a huge service level individual, I do think that I found that to be um, a bit of a challenge, but mm. it's just knowing that, well, not everybody's going to be for you and you're not going to be for everybody either. And, yeah. you know, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's kind of like that law of numbers. Like if you're, you're selling something, you have to talk to a bunch of people before somebody (laughs) says yes, or before you get a winner. Right. Like, I feel like it's the same thing with making friends. You have to talk to people, (laughs) Yep. like hang out with people, test them out in different settings. And then if it's a fit, awesome. If it's not, it's like, oh, all right, now I got to do this all over again. (laughs) Yep. Well, so that actually brings up a really interesting point, which is, um, what does it mean to be a friend as a mom with like working full time with all the obligations? Cause you know, in high school, it's easy. You hang out, you see each other every day, even in college, even like before kids, if you go to work and you make friends at work, you see each other every day, you're, you know, there's, there's a time input there that happens that is much more difficult to make happen when you have children. And I'll be very honest, my kids take priority. So if like, I don't care how many friends I have, unless it's, unless it's family, like I am not taking time away from my children or like my family things 
to deal with somebody else's drama. I mean, I'm just going to be like very, very straightforward with that. Like I support my friends. I'm there for them. You know, I'll, I'll do what I need to do, but it's not going to be at the expense of my kids. It just won't. Yeah. Whereas in my younger years before children, like I would have the time to be able to, if somebody was going through a breakup and they needed me there for them, I'm there. Like I'm there with popcorn and ice cream and whatever else they need and a shoulder to cry on. But now I think it would be difficult for me to do that because I'm not willing to risk or take away from my kids and my spouse. Yeah, no, I definitely think that. So that's, that's important, right? Like, I think it's really important to know that about yourself and really know what it is you're wanting from a friend and like what kind of friend you can be. So, you know, there are plenty of people who even as moms can be that friend who shows up like when somebody is going through something and, um, and who wants to do that. And then there are, you know, moms or, you know, fathers too, like who, you know, maybe can't do that or don't want to, because again, like, you know, it's, it's like, well, I don't want to take away from, you know, my own child. Um, I kind of am on the fence about it for me personally, to be honest. I think that there's huge value if you have a strong connection and friendship with somebody, even as a mom, that that person has to be important. And my kid is always going to be the most important person in the world for me, but he's not the only person in my world. And I think that's not only important for me to check myself because I'm not just a mom. That's not my identity. Um, But it's also important for him to understand that too, because if he grows up and expects that in relationships, he is the sun and the moon and the entire solar system and people are supposed to just be there 100% for him, then he's going to have that expectation in relationships growing up. And my thing is I'm really big about leading by example. And I have conversations with my little one. Granted, you know, he's close to being 10 now. Yeah. So I can be open and honest with him um, to an extent. But I believe in honesty and communication. And that includes with my little one. So I tell, you know, I let him know like, hey, mommy loves you. You know, you're the best thing in mommy's life. But mommy is also a person. Hmm. And I know it sucks when mommy has to be away sometimes and I don't do it often, of course, but mommy needs to be able to spend time with other people too. And he's at a point where he can understand that because I've kind of reinforced that and I've reinforced that it's okay for him to want to spend some time with, um, you know, his grandma or with his uncle or, you know, with his friends, like having his friends over. And it's just part of showing that, you are a whole and complete person and that's how you you know operate in the world like that's kind of how I look at it I don't look at it as I'm taking time away from my child I look at it as hey buddy like you know mommy's friend uh Lisa she's going through something really rough right now and mommy's gonna go show up for her Hmm. you want me to tell her anything from you do you want to come see her too And that's kind of how I navigate those tricky situations. Cause for me, it's really important. And that's why it's like, I have to put those levels in there, right? If you're a friend, I am going to show up for you. Um, If my little one has something going on in that moment, well, I'm going to come to you after, right? Like to my friend after, but I'm okay with saying, okay, well, right now this friend needs me. I need to go show up for them. I'll be right back if that makes sense. No, that makes sense. And I actually, I love that because I always feel the struggle um, because I want to show up for my friends, but then, and this is the other thing I was going to ask you, which is, do you feel like it's easier to take that time and pour into friendships into yourself now that you're homeschooling? Because the struggle I have dealt with is I'm, I work from eight to five. And so I'm sending my kids away from me for almost 10 hours, nine, nine hours. No, it, it ends up being 10 hours because I have to drop them off before I start work and I have to pick them up after I'm done. So they're already gone from me for 10 hours in a box, like in an institution, like in an institutional setting where they have to follow rules and all that stuff. And they don't have 
parents there with them. And so I only get to see them for maybe an hour in the morning and a few hours in the evening. And then on the weekends, the weekends are really the only time I have to have significant time with my kids. And so this idea that, and I, I do, I mean, I make time for certain things, but I'm cutting into the very limited time that I already have with them because I work full time and I'm not yeah, yeah. with them during the week. Yeah, no, I don't necessarily think that I find it, uh, you know, easier. I think honestly, like from a time perspective, it's probably a little bit more challenging now mm -hmm. to um, be able to, or willing to, um, or even just have the, you know, compassionate or emotional resources, like to pour into a friendship, right? Yeah. Because, um, you know, with adding homeschooling on it, like now during the days, like, even though I have to work and do homeschool, and even though we have like some structure with that, on the times that I have to focus on work because my kiddo is an only child, like there's so much like stress, guilt, and all sorts of things going on in my head. Like, okay, I should be spending more time with them. Yeah. Um, but you know, I have to, I have to work. Otherwise nobody's going to pay the bills, you know? Right. So I don't, I don't think it makes it easier, like from, like from an emotional standpoint and time management mm -hmm. standpoint, it actually makes it quite a bit more challenging. Like when, yeah. when I did work in a corporate world, i I worked a, like I worked a lot like it was too much like it was ridiculous but um but you know I still did make you know some time for friends like I would go out like maybe once a week you know usually okay. Friday or Saturday night was when I would go out but again it was always like when my bet um when my little one was tucked into bed and I could tell him good night um it. and that's how I handled it and yeah there's not as much that you can do in the evening times at nighttime like it's really going to be going to apps or going to the movies or just hanging out at a friend's house. But, you know, that's how I would balance that, you know, yeah. because again, well, like I, I didn't want to take time for my kid either. Yeah. So, you know, maybe that's a, an area to maybe look at it too. Well, let's talk about like how you manage it in a day, be like timing wise, because here's you, I mean, you told me you wake up at what, three 30 in the morning to get yeah. work done. So that's an ungodly hour, by the way. <laughs> Um, but, and, and we're doing this, it's five 30 in the morning. We're doing this. So like, let's talk about timing. I mean, I've been getting up at four 30 to go to the gym. Um, if I, in order for me not to be completely like out of it during the day, I need to get at least a minimum of six hours of sleep, which means you're going to, you have to be in bed by 10 30 at, at the latest if your if your kid goes to sleep at eight or eight 30, that gives you what an hour <laughs> to, to like, to get ready, like go out and come back. How, how do you find the time? Even once a um, week you're cutting into like the, everything you do in that evening after your son goes to bed, you're cutting into the next morning, like whatever you need to do to prepare for the next day. Right. Yeah, no. So I'm, I don't know. I, I, I will just forego like getting less sleep, to be honest. Like that's, that's usually been my strategy. Like, you know, I, I don't know. My mindset has always just been like, you know, I just, I have to do what I have to do. And yeah. um, I try my best to go to bed, like honestly, at the same time that my little one goes to bed because I do wake up early. Um, yeah. But waking up that early, like 3.30 has been in me since my little one was a baby because I used to work an hour away. Um, mm. So my com commute in one direction was an hour away. I would have to get up and, you know, pump and all that yeah. stuff, you know, and be prepared and like, and then go take my little one to my mom's house, um, you know, who I would pay as daycare at the time, you know, yeah, and then drive an hour to work. So I stopped doing that for a little while. Like when I stopped working in the corporate world, I was like, okay, I don't need to get up that early. But then I quickly realized like, no, I need that morning time, especially because, yeah. um, you know, that's, that's when I can focus and, you know, everything else going on with my little one school being involved as a parent in school and blah, 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 blah. But if I go out, you know, in the evenings, like that's just going to cut away from my sleep time and, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll be tired the next day, but 
you know, I'll snap out of it because, you know, then I've got stuff to do. Like, you know, I have to, I have to do things with my kid or I've got more work to get done or, you know, whatever it is. So if I only get, you know, three, four hours of sleep, you know, it's just for a night. Like if I'm doing it back to back, you know, that's a problem at this age that I'm at right now. In my younger years, it was completely fine. I could survive on like 15 minutes of sleep and like keep going. Right. Um, But, you know, right now, like if I go the entire week and I'm only getting, you know, two, three hours of sleep, well, that's going to catch up to me and be a problem. But, you know, for me, six hours of sleep is also the ideal. Like I need, you know, that six hours of sleep to feel like as refreshed, but I'm okay with four and the occasional three. Like if I go out and, you know, want to spend time with a friend for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) yeah. (laughs) And you're like, no, I don't, I don't know. Well, no, I mean, I, it's, I, I hear you and I, I have that mentality as well, but like, maybe it's getting older. Like I turned 40 this year, which was a big year for me, (laughs) a big (laughs) change. And I noticed that my body does not handle less sleep as well. It, it for It's really weird because last year I was 39, obviously. And that was the first year that I started doing the 5am, like 4.30am wake up. Um, and it was to go to the gym, but I was, it was easier for some reason to do like, you know, to not always go to bed on time and still be able to get up. And, and this year it's been immensely more difficult to do that. So yeah, I guess I hear you. Like I, I've definitely had that experience like as well. Like it is a lot more, like a lot more challenging, like, and especially, you know, as women, like we have different hormones and stuff like that, that just hit differently at different stages in life, like chronologically you know, chronological ages, yes. you know, um, and that does, it has like a huge effect on our bodies, especially like sleep metabolism and I don't know, just feeling good or weight, you know, different things like that. You know what I mean? Um, so I've definitely like experienced that as well. Like, you know, uh, even like when, uh, you know, when I turned 30, like I was like, I went from literally like, I guess how you experienced it, like in that 29 year, I'm like, okay, I'm still feeling good. (laughs) Two hours of sleep. No problem. We're good. And then all of a sudden it's like literally the day after my birthday, it's like, girl, what are you doing? You need to get rest. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's like, do you, do you understand what's happening here? Calm down. So I hear you on that. And I don't know the way I look at it is because like sometimes I'll honestly stay up a little bit late like until like midnight or something like after my little one's gone to bed and either get more work done if I decided to be like all right forget about work I want to hang out with my kid um you know because I'm like letting the mom guilt get to me or if I just you know want to relax and like watch like a movie or something like or a show like you know and have some alone time so you know I just I have to I guess, make those sacrifices, like whether it's just for like me time or if it's quality time with like a friend or as well. Um, But I I hear you, it's really challenging. Well, and I have to say, I have always been a night owl, like always, Um, like my, that's just my personality. It's always, I've always done better, like in the evening, like I could stay up till four o'clock in the morning, but you know, waking up has always been the more difficult, but that's changed. And I guess it's true that you can change your habits if it's important enough. You set yourself up for success with that. (laughs) Yeah. 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 You have to just like, know like why you want to do it. Right. And then Mm -hmm. commit to just getting it done. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I don't know. So, um, let's see anything else we want to talk about on this. Um, where, so like, where would you make friends? Cause I know like I'm still trying to figure it out, right? In a new area, we've been in Florida for two years. I'm still sort of trying to figure out how you meet people. Um, And like you said at the beginning, I'm now working fully remote. So I work full time, but I work remotely. So it's not like I'm meeting people at the office or, you know, building, you know, connections that way. I'm not even really connected to the community because my work is in a different part of the state, like my, my actual job. So I, I noticed like 
I would make friends before because as a practicing attorney, I would get involved in local bar events and like that type of thing. And it made sense for me to do that because I was working at a firm and that's how you build connections and whatnot, but I'm not doing that now. <laughs> like I, I'm not, I mean, I'm a member of the bar, but I'm not involved at all. And I don't really have the time to do that with my kids being so young. So how do you meet friends? Yeah, no, I think that that, or potential, I think that's a, more of a challenge right now, honestly, like I, for me, like, as an adult, um, and even as a, a mom, since I had my, my little one so young, um, I think work has always been how I've, I've met people. Like even, like, I mean, I think that's just kind of my, my nature, honestly, because for me, it's like I have these friends in like different stages, like, and I believe like, you know, people can be there for a season or a reason, right? Like that's mm -hmm. one of the things people say. And um, I've had a lot of friends for a season, you know, because yeah. we are working together or we are, you know, at school together, like going back in the, the younger years or, um, you know, anything like that. Like I would hang out with those people and we would spend time together because we work together and we got along well at work. So, okay, let's go hang out. And like, we would have a great time. And if they had kids, then bonus if it made sense we would you know get the kids together like I know I had co-workers where you know I invited them to my little one's birthday parties and you know mm -hmm. they would invite uh, my little one and I to their birthday parties like um you know invite us to go see like a play that the little their little ones were in and stuff like that like because we okay. you know made the effort to introduce our, our families together and and do stuff like that and those times like worked out I didn't quite sustain those relationships after like no longer yeah. working with them, but, you know, we remember like those people and we appreciate the time that we did have with those people, you know, yeah. but I think now, especially after the pandemic and, you know, I've been working from home since 2019, like is when I left the corporate world. Um, so just before things got crazy, um, I, I think you have like different priorities, like at different points in your life too. Like I was not like from 2019 to end of 2021 or close to the end of 2021. Like my focus was work, my kid, and that's it. <laughs> um, a little bit of dating here and there. We'll talk about that like in yeah. a later episode, but that was it. Like that was all I needed, wanted, cared about. And I felt good. But then, you know, end of 2021, beginning of 2020, it's like, okay, well, maybe I do need to reconnect with uh, my, my friends, not just over the phone, but like, <laughs> let's actually get out and uh, do something yeah. together. And, um, and just, you know, stuff like that. So then I did have to challenge myself to be like, well, where, where am I going to actually meet new people if I want to add new people into the mix? And yeah. It's either, you know, you go to something like the gym, bless you. Thank you. Um, you go to something like the gym or you join a club or take classes <laughs> or you meet through your kid's school. Yeah. And that's it. Like or really like in terms of what's that? Or kids activities. Exactly. And I've, you know, met a lot of people <clears throat> those ways like especially through like school <clears throat> yeah sorry my throat that's okay um, but especially like through school and you know trying to be friends the friends of <clears throat> oh I'm so sorry that's okay <coughs> <clears throat> sorry but um do you want to get some water <laughs> I might let me see if it comes back but <laughs> like if my little one makes friends of course, I would arrange play dates for, um, you know, my little one, because I want him to have friends and be able to see yeah. his friends outside of school where they can play and socialize and all that. And then on occasion, depending on the the mom, like, well, you know, we would become like kind of cool, but it wasn't like, oh, I want to hang out with you individually. It was more like, okay, I can get along Let's with get you together. Well, yeah. yeah, we'll take the kids out some more, you know, yeah. um, makes sense. Yeah. So I think that it's, 
I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a challenge. It, it depends on what you're looking for and that that would determine like where you go. I think if you're making friends, you know, through school, it's pretty much assumed that it's going to be like more about the kids than it is about like the actual connection, like the friendship. But I think that um, I, I love my alone time. Like, and that's part of like being an introvert. Like I, I love yeah. people. I really do. And like, I know you mentioned ambivert. I, I definitely have some ambivert tendencies yeah. because I'm, I can be really social. I love people, love talking to people, getting to know people. I love to talk, but I'm also super quiet and I need my time alone yeah. to recharge. So I like to go out like to a movie by myself or to lunch by myself, or I'll even go like, I had gotten into the habit that every summer after the school year, the first thing I would do is take, you know, two to three days and go stay at the beach, you know, by myself or like with, you know, a friend. I love and that. that's okay. also a great way to, to meet people because you're, you're out there as your own person in that, that scenario. And you can just talk to whoever you want yeah. um, and kind of meet people along the way. So maybe a little, little bit of solo travel, I think, I would recommend as the best way to yeah. to meet some folks. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, one of the things that you and I had talked about is how do you balance like having a relatively close family with fitting friends into that? Because um, mm. for me, like what I what I saw growing up is that. Um, I'm first generation American. So my parents are immigrants. My aunt and uncle are my parents siblings. So like my uncle is my dad's brother and my aunt is my mom's sister and they got married. So like they're very close knit. And then there were my two grandparents um, from each side and they all socialized together. Like they were in businesses together. Like they were very tight knit and there wasn't a huge Russian Jewish community where we lived. So it was just us. Yeah. And so what I remember is them socializing together a lot, but not really socializing with other families or anyone outside of sort of like the family unit. And I know that different people have different experiences. Like my husband, for example, has a group of friends that he's known since elementary school or middle school like they all grew up together in the same area um they all made friends in the they all went to the same school together they all went to college together like just you know they've known each other for years and so like do you make friends with the with your neighbors like is is that something that people do, do and are able to like actually build friendships with because it seems so random yeah <clears throat> so I don't know about the whole making friends with neighbors like I know I know who my neighbors are and I'm not interested in making friends with them we're just <laughs> I can tell I can tell we have different interests so I can be yeah. very cordial but no we're not going to become friends um <laughs> but like going towards the or, or speaking to the you know the, the family dynamic right you know, growing up, like I'm also first generation, um, you know, American, my mom and uh, father, even though, you know, we were not in the same, you know, household growing mm -hmm. up, but they're both from Jamaica. Okay. And um, I think that it creates some, a different dynamic than people who maybe their family has been here for, you know, generations. Yeah. Um, there's, I feel like a little bit more fear involved and that trickles down into the later generations. And I feel like that's a part of why sometimes we can really hyper-focus on the family unit as like the end all be all for socialization, for love, for, you know, sacrificing like our own identities for the family unit. And um, at least like that's some of the, you know, challenges that I experienced growing up. Um, and there wasn't a whole lot of focus or um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Focus or like even encouragement, that's the word, encouragement to make friends outside of the family for me growing up. Hmm. So while I did have a lot of friends, I wasn't necessarily like at school, right? I wasn't necessarily allowed to hang out with those friends outside of school. 
Mm. And that was definitely a struggle. And um, I think that's why I have been even in, in my adult years, like more of a, okay, well, I make friends with the people at work and yes, I will hang out a little bit more now, but it's like, okay, well, I'm with this group of people. Therefore, these are going to be like my friends for now. And then like, I move on. And then you go home. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, while I, I have made, you know, <clears throat> a couple of friends who like were still in touch, like, um, you know, eight, nine years later, that has kind of been my mentality. But I realized that it's really important to break away from that mentality because a family unit, it, it kind of goes back to like the one person being everything, like the, insor- yeah. the source of all of like your needs being met. Um, and I just don't think that that's fair for the individual to expect that to come from the family, mm-hmm. um, you know, nor is it fair to the family either because then you're setting yourself up for, well, I was here for you when you were going through this, you have to drop everything and be here for me now, like, cause I'm going through this. And like, how is that like a fair, mutually balanced right. like relationship, you know? Well, and there's so, more pressure to do that when it's family. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Cause yeah. your family's your blood, right? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. They'll be there like, for well, you when no one else will be. <laughs> yeah. Well, in theory, right? Like, in theory. That's, no, that's I mean, but that's, to, but that's the yeah, that's, process, that's, right? That's, is that you you build close relationships with family because no one else will always be there for you. That's I mean, that's the mentality, right? That's that's what I was always told that yeah, you, you can have it, friends, but family will always be there for you and will do, you know. We'll, yeah, and that's I definitely was kind of told that and like taught that or you know, uh, indoctrinated with that growing up too, but as you get older, like you see that that's not really true, right? Like, Mm -hmm. and it it definitely depends on your family structure and stuff like that. But, you know, I have found that in a lot of cases when going through some challenges, it would be a lot easier for me to lean into somebody who wasn't family than somebody who is, um, just because like just differences, like personality differences. Yeah. And, um, you know, somebody else can see me in a different way than uh, my family would and, you know, be able to provide like a little bit more motivation. I don't know, like comfort, but then also like, no girl, you got this than my family like would. Yeah. yeah. So I, I definitely think it just depends on who the family is. Like for me, I knew that, you know, I did need other people. Um, and it's like, you know, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, you know, Jim Rohn, Rohn says that like yeah. all the time. Um, and I always like to add to that. I'm like, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with or the most time on. So if you're thinking about people constantly, mm. or if you're always having to show up for like somebody who can't get their act together or yeah. whatever it is, well, that's going to keep you limited. You know, I don't want to say stuck because nobody's stuck, but it's going to keep you limited. And I think that the value of friendships is, or even just going it alone sometimes is being able to create your life and like set your life up in the way that you want it to be. So for me, I'm not going to trickle down like to my little one that family is the end all be all because it's not like you can grow up and hate me if you want to kid. Like I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, we hope not, but (laughs) yeah, we hope, I mean, of course, and I'm trying to do everything to make sure that that's not like what happens, but it's like, but it's okay if you do, because you're your own person. Right. And that's, I, I, I'm a little bit more of an individualist than a collectivist, I, I think. And I always have been like, ever since I was like younger, I don't like the group think mentality. Yeah. It's like, I'm very much like, no, we are all individuals. And as much as I love my family, I don't only want to spend time with my family. And sometimes I don't want to spend time with them at all. And that's okay <laughs> too. It's not yeah. because they're bad people or that I hate them. It's just that I'm my own person and I have, right. you know, different needs. So I think it's prioritizing, right? If you know you have like a family thing coming up, well, of course you're going to prioritize that family thing. But I think respect is important. And if and somebody- it both if ways, plan, right? Huh? Yes. It, and like, it's like- You if have I to make receive plan, it as well as give it. Exactly. 
And it's like, if I make plans with somebody like who's, you know, a friend or, you know, might become a friend or whatever, but then my family is like, Hey, this weekend, we're going to do X, Y, Z. Then I'm going to say, well, I already have plans. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to break plans with this other person to then go do something with my family. Um, And I know that that's a lot of times has been the expectation and it's like well I'm not going to do that because that's not showing respect to this person yeah you know and that's, well, and that's not something I person. struggled with a lot early mm. on is that yeah you know, and I was just, I just raised in this mentality where family comes first over everything over friendships over you know and everybody spends time with the family and you know it created issues with some some of my friends and even with my spouse where we were constantly doing family stuff and he didn't necessarily want to always do family stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And well, and I think that that's like really, you know, important, like when it comes to like um, a romantic relationship, right. It's like, well, if you're from this like super duper close, like tight knit family where everybody is like, just, you know, with each other, like one, it makes it hard to foster like a romantic relationship. Um and then two, like, it can make that, like, partner feel like, well, I don't matter because, like, if you're going to drop everything, like, for right. your family, like, what about me? You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think it's the same thing for, like, regular friends, too. Um, I wouldn't expect anybody to drop what they're doing for me. And I don't want to have people in my life that expects me to drop everything for them either right um because I don't feel like that's respect and I think it really is just about boundaries um and being able to say no and I think when you're starting to say no like I had the challenge where it's like oh like you're this this and this and like (laughs) oh you're being like whatever and I'm like well that hurts but I'm still gonna say no and do what I need to do because you know you just realize like I don't know, you're in charge of your own life. And like, you get to say yes or no to the things that you want to say yes or no to. Um, But I think that that's, that's it. It's like, it's just prioritizing. So it's like, well, let me check and see. Like, it's like, as a single mom, I'm going to think about what does my kid have going on this weekend or, you know, this week first, right? And then I'm going to think about, well, what do I have going on work-wise? And then I'm going to be like, okay, you know, call my sister and be like, Hey, did you want to, you want to do anything this weekend or (laughs) we're good? We didn't have anything planned. Right. No. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say yes to this person. And then if my sister calls me, it's like, Hey, you want to do this? Like on Sunday afternoon, I was like, girl, I already asked you. No, I made plans. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And I, and I think, you know, we have to be like conscious of like circumstances, right? Like if there's an emergency, then I am going to apologize and cancel on somebody right? and go take care of the emergency because that's what you do. Um, But if it's not, like, if it's just like, I already have plans, then no, I I am my own person. Like I'm, you know, I have plans and I'm going to say, no, we'll we'll hang out next time or I'll come to you after. Usually that's what I end up doing. I'm like, well, I'm going to go do this first. And then um, if you guys are still doing whatever, I'll come after or like, you know, if you really want to do it, then, you know, can we do 4.30 instead of 2.30, right. you know, because, you know, communication, negotiation. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's always fun to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> and you as well. So we always like, I just get into like these tangents, right? I like, know. oh my God. Well, like, we can I'm talk about family next girl. time. We can talk about family dynamics and setting boundaries next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure like that's that'll be several episodes I think <laughs> yes yeah well it's yeah. such a great such a great talk um thank you everyone for joining us and uh we will be back with the next episode soon all right thank you guys, all right. See you guys.